This is the show that explores the cool ways science, tech, and innovation are making the world a better place. I'm Carrie. I'm Asia. I'm Nick. And I'm Maddie. This, this is Fab Lab. Welcome to Fab Lab, guys. How cool is it that we get to talk about stories and share information about how science and tech are making the world a better place? We are discussing stories that are making positive changes for the planet. And what better place to do it than here at The Cove at UC Irvine, which is a hub for scientific innovation. That's right, Carrie. It's so cool to be here. And today we're going to talk about a big issue, the water crisis. Now, while it may seem like this isn't a huge issue, you know, you use water every day, you turn on your faucet, water comes out. But globally, 1.2 billion people live in areas with inadequate water. By 2025, two thirds of the world will live under conditions of water scarcity. Two thirds. Here in California and also other parts of the country, we've been in an extreme drought for about five years now. Although we can't necessarily conserve our way out of the water crisis, why don't we talk about some cool technologies that are helping to tackle it? I think this is a great topic for today, guys. Who has the first story? Oh, oh, I, I do. Okay, so imagine this, all right? It's a super cool idea. It's a drinkable book. Whoa. Okay, I know, mind explosion, but here, let me explain. Okay, it was created by Dr. Teresa Denkovich, and it's a book that's also like a filter so you can pour water over top of it and it creates drinkable water. Wow. Yeah, yeah, check this out. Around the world, over 700 million people do not have access to clean drinking water. Waterborne illness is one of the leading causes of death in the developing world. These diseases are entirely preventable and this filter can help provide clean water at a very low cost. My name is Terry Dinkovich. I am a chemist. I invented a paper that purifies drinking water. And I'm working with Water is Life to provide these filters to people who do not have access to clean drinking water. My project in particular was looking at using paper that could kill bacteria as you filter water through it. I found a method I liked and had to demonstrate that it could also kill bacteria. I led a group of students to test filters in South Africa. We looked at various contaminated rivers for total coliform and also E. coli. After filtering water through our papers, we found over 99.9% .9 reduction in bacteria count. It was comparable to the tap water in this country. What makes this paper special is that it's antimicrobial. We added silver nanoparticles, which act very strong to kill bacteria with a very minimal cost and can provide clean water for an individual for several days to a couple weeks. We've tested this filter and we know it works, and we're very excited to get it into the hands of people who desperately need it. So how cool is that? I mean, seriously. That pretty was great. awesome. Yeah, pretty awesome. And the science part of it, right, is that the pages are embedded with silver nanoparticles, and it's those nanoparticles that actually kill the bacteria. Wow, yeah, so very, very silver, interesting. It's an interesting book, you know, right. pretty valuable stuff. It would also be a really useful tool if, you know, you go out hiking or camping and, you know, something happens, like a bear comes onto your site and takes all of your water. <laughs> if you have something like this, that you're walking around, you find a stream, you're not sure if it's clean water, if it's, you know, stagnant or whatever. So you can just filter the water through and, and you know, you'll, yeah. be, uh, you'll be good to go. And if you get stuck out there, one page lasts up for 30 days. Wow. Yeah, so if the bear takes everything, even your clothes and you're out there, nice. and you don't... <laughs> at least you're not we'll thirsty. work for food. Yeah, you can use this piece of paper. It's great. Now there is another awesome innovation. It's called the Life Straw. Let me show you guys. It's super portable, right? It's pretty easy to use. You, s you sip out of the top there, obviously, and then you have the filters on the bottom. So you just stick that whole thing down in water? Or? Yeah, 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 it's a straw. See, I have water here. So you just use it like you would a straw, but I mean, it does take a little bit more effort because the water is being filtered. It's for your own good, right? Yeah, I totally could have used that. I was just in Cambodia learning all about rainforests and there's water everywhere, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't want to get sick. So life straw would have been a great idea. I went to Cambodia once and the monkeys were like all over the place. Like they, they'll steal your food. Hopefully they don't steal your life straw. Just throwing that out there. Unless they're thirsty. Unless they're thirsty and they're trying to get some clean water. Get your own life straw monkeys. Yeah, right? Wow, Asia, that is innovation at its finest. All right guys, we get to explore new cool technologies and solutions to the water crisis when we return. 
Up next on Fab Lab, we tap into Wi-Fi water and we'll light things up with a new innovation. Support for Fab Lab comes from our friends at Samsung Salt for Tomorrow, Lenovo Fab Finder, Brocade, Ally Bank, Motorola Mobility Foundation, and the Good Entertainment Foundation. We're back at Fab Lab discussing new technologies and innovations all coming together to help solve the water crisis. Who has the next story? Uh, I have one. Um, I'm calling it Wi-Fi Water, and uh, it's an irrigation control system for your lawn. It is called Blossom, and uh, it not only controls the amount of water that your household uses on the lawn, but it saves money. So win-win, right? What's really interesting about Blossom is that it, and you can program different you know, zones for your, your yard. You're like, here's where the succulents are. They don't need as much water. Here's where the grass is. You know, it's in a lot of sun. It might need more. The, the app is so great. You just you swipe a couple things on your phone. You press some buttons, and you can really control all it's of the, like the water. Lawn Care 2.0. Yeah. Or actually, like 9.0. That's like taking it to the next level. Yeah. I used to mow the lawn as a kid, and I wish that we had something like that, because then we could control its growth, maybe. And I wouldn't have to be out there mowing for hours and, hours and hours. I think that's a great idea, Carrie. I mean, I know I've been walking around my neighborhood with my dog, and my feet get wet because they're watering the sidewalk instead of the actual plant. And so if you can use this smartphone and this app to actually get the water where it needs to be going, why not? Because, yeah, you know what doesn't need water? Cement. <laughs> <laughs> Last I checked. And another great part about the app, you know, if it's scheduled to rain or unexpected rain comes, you can turn the system off and then if it happens not to rain, then you just add a touch a button, you can just Pushing turn it back on. Yeah. Super C. Technology. <laughs> Speaking of apps that make a difference, I want to introduce you guys to Mercedes Monet. Hello. Hey. Welcome yeah. to the lab. Hi, Nick. Thank you for joining us here. Uh, you created this app called Plant Link, correct? Correct. And it essentially it makes watering plants super efficient and easy, right? Correct. Can yes. you walk us through how that works? Absolutely. So Plant Link is a water sensor for your plants. The way that it works, this probes, you stick them in the soil, just yeah. like that. Wow. And then you grab your phone. You launch your plant link app, and if you tell us what plant you're trying to uh, track, in this case we have a basil plant, we will tell you if the watering levels for this particular plant are good. And right now this basil plant is pretty happy. That's <laughs> awesome. And can you use it for other plants? Absolutely. We have a database over 50,000 plants in there. Oh, so you can wow. find just about anything. How does that work? How, yeah. how does it measure the... Great question. Yeah. So um, the way that it works is that these two sensors actually here, we send an electrical signal between the two of them. And depending on how much water there is in the soil, the resistance between these two probes will change in the amount of water. We take that measurement, we send it to our database in the cloud, we analyze it, and then we send that information back to you guys. Wow. Thank you so much, Mercedes. When we return, we're going to talk about even more science and tech solutions solving the water crisis. Coming up on Fab Lab, we explore the power solar technology has on water. Here we are back at Fab Lab discussing groundbreaking technology, all about the topic of the day, the water crisis. That's right. We already had some really cool stories. Uh, we had Wi-Fi water, uh, Plant Link, uh, the drinkable book, obviously my favorite, uh, and the life star, which Asia talked about. So who has the next Fab Lab story? I do. So check this out guys, my story is all about a young woman from New Hampshire and she used solar energy to filter water. Visiting her family in India, she noticed that people were drinking dirty water and so she wanted to do something about it. And so she she looked around and noticed that solar power was, was available, the sun is available, it's always beating. And so she created this fast process to convert solar energy which purifies the water. Hello, I'm Deepika Karup and I'm 17 years old. Today I'm going to talk about the scientific concept of photocatalysis, which has the potential to help solve the world water problem. So what exactly is a photocatalyst? Well, photo means from the sun, and a catalyst is something that speeds up a reaction. So a photocatalyst is a material that uses sunlight to accelerate a reaction. Photocatalytic water disinfection is green, sustainable, and cost-effective. 
and has the potential to save millions of lives. Wow, it could really change the world, and I think that's what Fab Lab is all about, learning about these issues, making a difference. She's amazing. I mean, it shows at any age you can really, you know, bring forth change and use all the resources that you have in front of you to, to do something like that. That was really absolutely, great. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And Maddie, even you, at, you know, 11 years old, you spent eight years trying to get sustainable palm oil into Girl Scout cookies, which, I mean, so you're just, you're just another example of a young person doing something amazing to make the world a better place. Well, thank you. Guys, I think we should clap for Maddie. Thank you. <laughs> and Girl Scout cookies are pretty amazing, so kudos. All right, guys, who's got the next story? I have something for you guys, okay? I have gifts. <gasps> yes. 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 Yep, because it's not always thank about the you. giant Ooh. innovations. You know, sometimes it's about the things that you can wow. put on and you now, know, go really do yoga class. Now, you're really going to have to explain on. this yeah, one. I will, uh, okay. Um, There's a girl named Lindsay Hemrick, right? And she created this active wear from recycled bottles, and it's called Tiki. So you use recycled uh, bottles, you save water, it's helping the environment, and you can do yoga and how cool are these? You know what's amazing about this? The if you think about the texture of a you know bo a plastic bottle, like it's plastic, it's hard, it's not very these right. are incredibly soft pants. Yeah. So the fact that they were able to take a bottle and make it it's like like this feels like air on my skin. It's amazing. <laughs> what do you think this was one bottle? <laughs> oh yeah, how many bottles go into it? Right? I don't know. I'm gonna guess one. ten. Yeah, there's there. one with the fox on it. I think Wait, that's the best one. I've got one. the fox one. one. Do you have the look fox? how cute this is, guys. I would look great in those. You would look great in these, Nick. Thank you. Thank Nick, it is so sweet of you to give us these presents, but I feel like I can speak for all the girls when I say that the greatest present of all is your presence. Oh! oh and then we'll go back home. Nice. nice. Like that. Sharing information about how to save water, that's what I do. Also, so. I know you're not going to wear these, so I'll just go ahead and take them. Oh, yeah, you me. go ahead. Yeah. And guys, we still have a lot more stories to share on Fab Lab when we return. Nick, thanks, buddy. Thank you yes, so much. Great. Very thoughtful. Up next on Fab Lab, we prove with fewer drops, you can grow a lot more crops. The innovation continues. Welcome back, guys. So today we have been discussing stories that we've discovered that are tackling the water crisis. And from big concepts to small ideas, these innovators and inventions are truly changing the world. So who's up next? Oh, I've actually got one. Uh, if it's cool with you guys, I'd like to switch from technology over to biology a little bit um, and tell you about an invention called M Oasis, uh, which is a non-toxic gel that optimizes the use of water in soil for crops. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty great. So let's roll that footage, Mom. Hi, I'm Dan Miller, and I work for a company that helps farmers grow more food with less water. Bounty gel, and it looks like a little powder. Kind of looks like, well, that's a lot of it on my hand there. That, it looks like sugar. And what it is, it's a polymer. And polymer is a material that's made up of parts. Actually, the parts are called monomers. You put them together, you have polymer. This particular polymer is made up in such a way that it can hold on to water molecules really effectively. So you can think about it as like a super sponge. So each little crystal of Bounty Gel can hold 250 times its weight in water. That's a really interesting piece of technology, guys. It kind of reminds me of a baby diaper. You know, it's just like super absorbent. I mean, it doesn't like release the moisture back into the air, I guess, but yeah. It's kind of there, yeah. yeah. Stuff yeah, let's see the similarity. Okay. So today we, we covered like a lot of ground. You know, we talked about science, we talked about tech, and even biology and engineering as well, about how all those things have came together to help the water crisis. And later on in the show, we're gonna see how celebrities are doing their own thing to help solve the water crisis. Coming up on Fab Lab, we tap into Girl Power with a special brainstorm at the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Lunchroom Launchpad. All right, guys, we're back at this very special think tank called Fab Lab. Yes, it is a place where we always love hearing from the fascinating young minds who are trying to make the world a better place. Yes, and today our friends from the Girl Scouts are going to be brainstorming for this week's Samsung Solve for Tomorrow's Lunchroom Launchpad. Of course, the discussion for today is the water crisis. Now, Maddie, you got to be there with these girls. What, what did you think? They were just so smart, so creative. I left completely inspired. <laughs> oh. I'm here with some amazing Girl Scouts, and we are brainstorming ways to solve the water crisis. How can we use water more efficiently? How can we conserve water? What are your ideas? 
whenever I keep water up, it always comes out cold at first. Yeah. But I was thinking maybe we can get some sort of system that can make a bucket pop up and it can collect that water and then send it to plants that need watering. That's cool. When you go to the bathroom and there's water already in the toilet, maybe to eliminate that, you pressurize the water so it just goes down. That's a great idea. Okay, so pressurize toilet. <laughs> we could make a shower head that you attach to your shower head and it senses how far away you are from the shower head. It turns off the water so you're not wasting it and when you come back to it, it turns it back on. Which is a great idea. How can we make water more accessible and cleaner? You can have a handy dandy water bottle that you carry around with you that can have a filter in it. So if you need water but there's no clean water, take that water bottle put some water in it and it'll filter itself. That's such a cool idea. These are just some really amazing ideas about how we can use science and technology to make the world a better place. I was really impressed with those girls. They showed me that you can make a big difference from your community just by working together, teamwork, coming up with an idea and taking action. Yeah, they were really, really inspiring. Uh, but now I think we should move on to talking about what some celebrities have been doing to conserve water and how they've been going to their social media accounts to talk about it, which is a really great thing because they're all in a position to be role models for younger people. Definitely. Like for example, Orlando Bloom. We all know him from Pirates of the Caribbean, right? So he's been <laughs> quoted saying that sometimes I wear clothes for a week without washing them. That's him saying that, not me. <laughs> um, and he's cutting back on showering entirely, which, I mean. Hey, that's a good idea. That saves money. I've been doing it for the last month. I think that's a great start, but let's get serious. Matt Damon is walking the walk. He co-founded water.org, which has brought clean drinking water to four million kids. That's really great. And I think that other celebrities, you know, if they're doing their part to conserve water, like take a minute, go to your social media, let people know you have a lot of followers. Like, you know, there's kind of a responsibility there to, you know, spread let the word. people know that it's okay to not shower. Exactly. Or yeah. wash your clothes. Exactly. Or oh, your hair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we covered a lot of ground on the water crisis today from celebrities all the way to how to water your plants efficiently with baby diaper biology. Yes, and uh, from saving water by not washing your hair uh, to a non-toxic gel that I'm still trying to really wrap my brain around, we did cover a lot of ground today. Yeah. And how about the young people who are setting an example for all of us? Yes, they were great. And I think today should be an episode dedicated to the young innovators of the world. Yeah. We should be celebrating them. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really excited to talk about new stories next week. Yeah, me yeah. too. Totally. All right, Good. let's bring it for a high five. All right. All right. All right. Woo! Yeah. Hey. 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 Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 Wearing those yeah. pants. Wow. Wearing those pants. You snorted. I'm sorry. Everybody settle. Who wants to do yoga?